is right here is where the action. Can you see my? You can see it, right? Yes. And this is where the action is. And of course, this is at, um, if I go reverse, all right, you're recording, right? Correct. Okay. So if we go back to where they shut it off, and I step forward one step at a time, I'm going to go really slowly. Now that is at 1.30, and there's a lot of spacecraft around. I'll um, roll this up so you can see that the sky's got a lot of, uh, but there's not a whole lot of shooting going on. Something's going on. There's some kind of vibration coming out of the uh, sun gate, or the soul gate. Okay, here's the next shot here at 1.42. Of course, yeah, they, yeah, that's one every 12 minutes they take a picture. There's some shooting going on there in 142. What is this from, camera? This is from NASA, NASA's LASCO, L A S C O C3, which is always a blue field. Now, there's a vibration going on. That you will notice when you go look at C3, which is a little bit zoomed in. Yeah, notice this big ring here of uh, uh, everybody is getting, there's this, that we are moving away from the entire, they are getting out of the way. And yeah, you can actually see. Yeah, they, they are lined up here and getting out. These guys are trying to get out of the way. Okay, and let me bring it back down to the controls. And I'll just get that just in shape where I can step it. Right, I'm going to the, actually I should, I need to see the time. Uh, so I'm going to step it, and it goes, uh, it skips a picture. No, I, actually I guess that, that is, uh, and you see there's more that are under the stylus. Which are, you know, or just I like, think about right here. Because uh, they flipped the satellite, the satellite got jolted out of place, and they flipped it and it got moved 30, 30 degrees closer to S2. So these guys are getting the heck out of the way. Right. And here it is. Um, it was a. Uh, yeah, yeah, they skip a picture. Instead of going to, to no, actually that's took 12 minutes. Uh, I forget, 12 minutes on one and six minutes on the other. Anyway, everybody's like boogieing to get out of the way. Let me, I, let me uh, do a little introduction. This is uh, Project Ascension. Uh, I'm your host, Andrew Mallet, and I have here with me today, uh, Sergeant, Daniel Brad McBolan, United States Air Force. And I'll leave at the end uh, his bio. You can read through your discretion, you know. Go ahead now. So I want people to know what we're, what's going on. So, oh, okay. <laughs> well, we basically wanted to show you something we've never seen before. I've never seen before. Right. And uh, so I'll basically take everybody, just kind of recap. I'm going to go back to 1.30. And uh, there's a, a disturbance at the soul gate. Now, this is uh, the stylus, and this is the holder right. that holds the stylus. It's, it's kind of arched, and it holds the stylus in focus, but it itself is, is further away and out of focus. This is representative of the sun. Now, we're going to step forward in uh, each progressive picture. There's a little bit of shooting going on. Now there's some kind of a vibration. And you'll see it on C2, but not here so much. A little bit further out. But all of a sudden, from now, you start to see people or battle planets getting out of Dodge pretty quickly. Right. The people that are new to this, those aren't stars. Those are actual guys there, right? Correct. Yeah, these are uh, actually what I'll do just because you brought that up. I'm going to reduce uh, the view. Um, actually, I've got it as low as I can. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up to all the pictures for today, and I'm going to run it through extremely fast so that you'll see what's called stellar drift. There are stars in the background, and then there are battle planets, the size of the moon and larger, in the forefront, and of course they're shooting at each other. Right. But what I'm going to do is open this up so that you can see the entire 37 frames that they have so far allowed us to have. And I'm going to speed it up. Let me get it down here where... What is going on? There we go. All I need to do is just get uh, faster. Faster, 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 faster. Now, the faster I go, actually let's slow it down a little bit so your eye can follow it. Now you'll see there's a lot of stars out here, and this is called stellar drift. This is the Earth rotating, right, and the stars appearing to pass by us, but actually we're rotating. Now you'll see there's a lion's belt, right. Okay, and some of these constellations you'll easily recognize. Now, all of this little bit of action that you see going on around here, all of this stuff coming out the backside of the gate, because they use the stylus now to hide the backside of the blown out portion of the gate. Um, that what, what you're seeing there are battle planets coming out. Now, I'm going to slow this down. And the gate is our actual sun, Stargate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call it a uh, Sol Gate. Yeah. Um, it's uh, basically an illegal gate system. Now, you'll see stars, uh, battle planets, getting out of the way. And then, of course, you see the regular stellar drift. But you'll see a lot of these, um, something's happening here at the beginning where um, all of a sudden, these battle planners are boogieing out of this area. They do not want to be in this area. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when you see C2, you'll know why. And of course, when we step it, and you begin to see the bowls come out, the vibration begins to happen there. And then it jumps exactly eight hours from 706 yeah, you can really see it. To 1506, which is 306. So that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A full eight hour. Right. Okay, because something, something frightened NASA. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you on C2 what, um, just a little bit more of what you could not see. On C3. So we go to Solo Player, and this is what comes out. It is a seraphim. Explain that. Um, it's uh, sort of like a dragon, but there are, like, um, according to basic history, the seraphim angelic creatures, they all are dragon like creatures with wings. They all look like a dragon. Uh, one third of them got in an argument with the ultimate creator and were cast out of wherever the ultimate creator is. Right. Two thirds of them stayed and decided to become or to remain obedient. Well, as you can see, Here's the seraphim, and you can clearly see the snout on this fellow in the neck. Uh, you can see the tail end portion of the claws all the way down here, and you can see both, there's one wing, uh, the right wing, and there's the left wing. Uh, it is a, and if you know anything about um, some of the ancient writings about seraphim, as you notice here, there is a vibration in the stylus right. of a certain frequency. It is vibrating like crazy. There's just a piece of metal in there that, uh, so the sun here doesn't blind you. 
and here is the depiction of the size of the sun gate. Uh, anyway, this this dude is so big, and he pops out the uh, stuff coming out of the other side. Now I think if we got that right, Earth should be. I think Earth is about right here. Uh, um, Patty, Sergeant Patty to Sergeant with them because they twist and turn these things in such a way that Earth used to be right underneath this stylus right here. Mm. And then they rotate them and you get disoriented in space. Uh, it's rather easy to become disoriented. Uh, now what I'm going to do is basically uh, reduce this end side, I believe, down to 75% so that we can operate the controls and you can see more fully what's happening. Oh, okay, so actually what I'll do is try to get as much of the picture in there as possible. Now I'm going to step it back, and it may skip a few frames because they got really twisted up over this. And this is unplugged straight into Soho, Lasco, C2. Right. At, this, at this point in time, uh, they're archived. Is this like a positive or a negative beam? Do you know? Oh, it is a positive beam because um, we put out a call. We got in trouble last night. So we had a bunch of people put out the call because somebody opened up a portal and were coming after us. And we wondered how come we were all beat up and sick and coming back from astro missions with up to six different types of snake venom right. in our bodies. And if you don't think uh, you can come back from the astral realm with corporeal damage, uh, physical damage to your body, um, I'll show you a thing or two. You can. Anyway, uh, they're yelling going on. Now, they said that only certain ones are announced, allowed to announce the ultimate creator. And, and they do so whenever there is a presentation, whenever someone comes into the presence of the ultimate creator. There's a fellow, uh, there's a seraphim who stands behind the ultimate creator and he makes an announcement and lights flicker all around and it's, a, you know, it's you know, good to do. Right. But it gets your attention when the seraphim you know, um, does the announcement, it literally shakes the ground you're standing on, according to many different cultures. Wow. Uh, okay, I'm going to back him back into the Stargate here, or, or Soul Gate. And of course, you don't get a whole lot of view here. I mean, we go back to 130 or whatever this has, okay, which is 136. Okay, we've backed it up. And then what I'm going to do is uh, speed this up so you can see some of it, okay? Yes. Okay, some stars you will see this, you can see barely the red washes out. Most of these things, but you can see stellar drift. Yeah. And you can see one thing standing out here on its own that doesn't move for anybody. Right. He's not moving. He's not doing anything. He's just remaining there. And that's not an artifact or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like a defect in the lensing or anything of that sort, but we're going to slow it down to creepy call. And we're going to step it. Now they add a, a bunch more on here and they just keep going. But you'll notice that these battle planets are shooting at smaller vessels. These battle planets are huge. Yeah. And you'll see somebody trying to get away from whatever's coming out of the gate. They are bugging. They are trying to get out of the way because there's a vibration beginning to take place. For the like trolls and disbelievers 
you know, this is, you can't fake this. Yeah, this is what you paid for with your tax dollars. This is science. So, right. Uh, what we're showing you is science. Science. What you see with your own eyes, the state of mind you're in, or the state of mind you have, that's really up to you. Right. We're not trying to tell you what is or is not. We don't want to mislead you. Like someone will say, oh, that's a comment passing through. Really? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, you zoom in on it. You zoom in on it, you'll see it's spiral in nature. Hmm. Like a bullet coming out of a rifle barrel. Now, as we begin, you'll see all these uh, craft that are around the sun, they're heading in every direction. Right. They are trying to get out of the way, and you can see the stylus is already vibrating. Terrifically. Yeah, pretty much. Quite a okay. bit. Okay. Then as we step forward, you see everybody getting out of the way. Nobody wants to be anywhere close to, to, to this guy. What's impressive is the distance they move in such a short time. Right. These pictures are taken in one I forget what Patty says. I don't know if it's a ten thousandth of a second. She talks in microseconds. I don't. I, I'm trying to do the conversion, and so basically, it's like one ten thousandth of a second. So when you see these beams shooting across, they're happening faster. You know, you're gone. You're dead. You're toast before you even know it. Right now, you see this guy is getting out of the way, and it appears like. Everybody else is leaving town. They're, they're just getting out of the way, left, right, and center. We know that because we watch from a different angle on C on C3. Now this is C2. We're going to step a little bit forward. I'm going to try to get this where you can see a little bit better. Okay, there's still shooting going on. Yeah. This dude, this dude is shooting at this dude. That shoot the dude is shooting at someone there in the distance, and you see even the folks that uh, everybody's trying to get out of the way of whatever's coming out of the gate. Whenever you open one side of the gate, usually the other side comes out because somebody shot this portion of the gate up. They shot it out uh, right. about four months ago. They blasted the back side of the gate. Usually you come in, you go out one door. Right. Um, there was a battle planet uh, about four and a half times the size of Jupiter, standing right there, uh, kind of like a gatekeeper, keeping the bad guys out. And um, so they shot the back side of the gate out, and of course there were ships around that. They were anticipating that, and of course they detonated it. They hit that ship, because it didn't even get out to this position right here before it detonated. And it wipes out the entire screen, except for you can see, and it jolts this satellite out of the way to the point where, when we read, you realize that this was in a different position back then. This battle planet was down here. The shock wave hits this, it drives this discus way up. I'll show that picture in a little bit here. It sh it, this um, stylus in the whole telescope. And you can see this um, gatekeeper here, and it's about four and a half times the size. And then you see out here, uh, it blew the back side of the gate when this was reoriented. I'll, I'll just do it as if it were this way. You see uh, the detonation of the fusion drive vessel. And in the corona, uh, you can see an Archon vessel just before it's vaporized. And then it adds a second explosion. But that's on that's on, on another day about four months ago. I think those are the ones that you shared with me and I put on my Facebook. Oh, okay. So now we're going to go a little bit forward. And you see these guys are fleeing. They're not moving towards <laughs> So They are around so getting 
uh, everybody out of Dodge because uh, there's this vibration, this sound, this announcement, and everybody wants to get out of the way, which, you know, I, I think it's fair warning. And so, <laughs> everybody is getting out of the way, you see a shockwave. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's not a coronal mass right. ejection. That's what I was going to say. Is like that's not known to goofy no coronal mass ejection like they say in the mainstream media. Right. This is perfectly right. And there is some kind of uh, frequency coming out there, cutting a hole right through this right. this energy. And you have this coronal, uh, this different shaped coronal coming out on the outside perfectly around this. Um, I don't ever recall seeing that ever in my entire time watching this uh, or monitoring this satellite, sometimes 24 seven, four days at a time. Now, you see this vibration is even can be seen yeah. In the uh, in the, the ejector, the inner yeah the ejector, the inner and outer ejector, and this is like not a total mass ejection at all. Right. It's like a uh, some kind of a, a a sound wave or a shield, and you know there's no air in space, so you don't really hear anything. <laughs> well. It looks yeah. like a shockwave. Yeah, it's it's definitely an announcement. Um, you can you can be um, inside a, a, a craft, and because you have air in the craft, when the vibration, the shockwave hits your vessel, of course you hear the announcement loud and clear. You hear the sound. Um, one of the Apollo, I think the only Apollo mission that actually went to the moon. Uh, kicked off some empty hydrogen fuel cells. Hmm. They kicked it off and it hit the moon and the moon rang for like six hours. And now you can't hear it when you're outside. Well, maybe you can because you're EVA, you're taking your... But they had to put up with this tremendous ringing for like six hours, hard to communicate. <laughs> And so, uh, out comes this fellow, and everybody is getting out of his way. Everybody is getting out of his way. And you can see his uh, long neck, a snout. You can see his, uh, the shoulder of his left wing. You can see the shoulder of his right wing. And you can see he's bathed in light. Uh, you can see his, um, he's got legs like a man, but you can see the talons down below. And then, of course, the next step is, oh, he's gone. It's eight hours later. Yeah. So, really, whatever this was that came out, and I believe it to be a, uh, a seraphim because... We just happened to be in trouble last night, so our group was in deep kimchi, and we were being, uh, you know, targeted to the point where Hal put off, sent me an email. I had the wingmakers contacting me, um, actually a wingmaker assassin, uh, striking me, and it's like, thumbs up, I oh, he's a nice guy. I'm a nice guy, but the only difference between him is he's still an assassin, and I used to be an assassin. I was a sleeper, and but he was quite aware of everything he's ever done. Hmm. And so now we have this air thing coming out, and you can fully see him, and you can see the blast wave of his announcement. And I mean, it is, you know, it's, you can see the vibration lines, of the satellite, so it's shaking the whole satellite. How far is the satellite away? Um, they, they really don't tell us. Um, I really even can't put a, uh, and this happened at 7-12 when uh, 
this fellow emerges. Right. Now, I also have some photographs I'd like to show you that I got from a friend of mine who's very, uh, he's a shaman. And um, when I was a younger man, I had an experience with, um, well, let me say, um, I'll just put these up here. And lower this down and bring it over here and open it up. There's a lot of stuff you should really be looking at. And I can get in trouble uh, letting people see that very long. Of course, you can pause it and study it all you want. Right. Um, but anyway, here is uh, now when I went back and tried to get it again, the it was you can't. There's not a whole lot of detail, but you can you can definitely tell um, that they are trying to get out of this fellow's way. And um, let me see if I can. Now I'm not going to go with them anymore. And when I was a younger man, I had an encounter with two of these uh, two of these fellows. Um, two of these fellows uh, came to me and I was completely clear on and I noticed I couldn't breathe. Yeah. So, uh, and they were kneeling uh, and I was in a bedroom and um, there was a four, probably an 800 pound four poster bed I was laying in. 800, 800, maybe more, maybe more like nine to a thousand pound. It was a, uh, can't remember the name of it, but it was a four poster bed. I used to do chin-ups on the, the poster because they were solid. You couldn't move it. Hmm. You could you take three people just to move it so you could vacuum. This fellow sent me a picture. Um, he walked in the bathroom one day. Now you can see it's kind of dimly lit. He walks up and he looks in the mirror, and this is what he sees in the mirror. He sees a throne, and he sees a being sitting on the throne with a beard, with a face, long hair, a white garment, and a crown. And behind him is this fellow with jagged teeth, and he's screaming. And you can see that there is a halo of light around this Kekonian fellow, the, he, he's not a Kekonian, he's a seraphim. Um, I'll just say that the bad guys are the Dracos and the seraphim are the good guys. How did they get that? Did he just look yeah. in the mirror and had his cell phone or something? Or? No, uh, he actually took this with a cell, uh, with a cell phone because this is what showed up in the picture, what he saw. Wow. And it and it really freaked him out. And he goes, <laughs> and he kept seeing it every time he looked, and he just stayed real still and photographed it. And so I put it in different aspects so that you can see that this seraphim has its arms folded. Yeah, you can really see it there. Yeah, and he's screaming. And it's causing light lightning kind of sparks coming from the crown of his head. But he's screaming. The declaration. And uh, this fellow said, Oh, that was the ultimate creator. And this is the fellow that's uh, the only fellow left, according to what this gentleman told me. I won't show you his own face because I don't have his permission. Mm -hmm. But um, you can see that the seraphim has got his arms folded and it is screaming the announcement of. What this gentleman calls the ultimate creator. Does he it is screaming the announcement? Did he hear what it was being said? Um, he did not say. Oh, okay. He did not say. He was in a lowly lit bathroom, just went in there and took a little look in there and said he saw this and he said he must take a picture of it. So here's the. Uh, a pinkish version because I just put kind of put it through a, a series of filters and you see a guy sitting there 
with his garments and hands held up. Mm -hmm. And according to this gentleman, there were stars here or some types of marks on the inside of this fellow's hands. Anyway, he has hair down here, he has a beard, he has gold fringe garments with a cummerbund, and he's quite muscular. Uh, it's very hard to pick him out, but you see the guy with the, the seraphim with his arms folded with his mouth open screaming. Uh, you can see that's pretty quite a uh, vibration, quite a. Uh, let me zoom in on it here. You can see it's causing quite a disturbance right here. All right. And uh, now you can see his lower jaw and his upper jaw, and you can see his fangs hanging out, and you can see his eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Here's his head, his mouth. And his eyes are on both sides of his head, and he is screaming the announcement of the divine, the ultimate creator, who is seated at the chart, which is, uh, according to many different scriptures, is the announcement. It's always done. When you go in, you, you, it's the announcement is made, and that kind of thing. And then you see all kinds of folds into here. Right. And you said this is a. Uh this gentleman's an actual shaman? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's the first shaman I ever saw. The moment I saw his face, I uh, had a vision. Right. He had a website, and uh, he was kneeled down, and he took a picture, and I saw that, and I immediately went into vision. found uh, his telephone number, and called all a week, uh, these certain shapes. Um, devil, that's yes, right, uh, Devil uh, Merkaba, it's called Merkaba. It's well, two six pointed uh, Merkabas rotating, and you can't tell which way they're rotating. Right. So that, but you, in your mind, you can literally create them to rotate one way or create them to turn inward on one another, and they share the same um, axis, so they rotate in within one another. Anyway, here's another, um, kind of a little further out, so you can see this dude is really screaming, because he's got his mouth wide open, and there you can see... No, you can really see it there. Yeah. I took all the color out, of course, the hands show up, the robe shows up, the beard shows up, the dude with the folded hands, uh, the seraphim dude, and you can see his mouth wide open. And uh, you can see him exiting. Now, this is a D res portion of what I downloaded compared to what I downloaded at uh, earlier this morning. And this fellow's coming out, and obviously he's making a noise because the next shot, nobody wants to even try to explain what came out of the gate. All I've ever seen coming in and out of the gate are star planets, um, Kachina, the blue Kachina, the red Kachina, trying to come in from outside. It did not come through the soul gate. They tried to interlock through the galaxy and got immediately kicked out. Uh, but uh, like I say, this is what my experience of seeing these fellows that were paralyzing me. But they were they were really they were touching my body and doing something as if they were dressing me. So I just took a shower, came in and laid down the bed, both lights uh, were on and then sort of, this is a big bed. There's a super king sized bed on a unmovable I mean uh, one person is difficult to move to move this bed around it's a four poster bed and a solid oak and you can see him yelling and then I uh, just basically go through the color so that you can actually see what he's doing and then uh, of course you see this fellow emerge 
And these are low res. You don't see the vibration as much because I got these pictures off of um, what they left up there. They de res it. And then you'll see another picture here where oh, I erased that one of the original photograph. Because this is the key, but I also have uh, somewhere. That's like half the size of the sun. Yeah. The dude is yeah. half the size of the sun. And I think this is the original. Much clearer. Yeah. Much more resolution. And they de res it. They won't need I don't even have to go into that. People understand that. But um, these creatures were kneeling at my bed, sitting down on their haunches. They were kneeling, and their heads were like, you know, a, into the ceiling. All I could see was the snout coming out, and um, scales, and pure white clothing. Then after they did whatever they did, because one pulled me right into the one on the, uh, I laid down on the right side of the bed, the one pulled me, and they, they pulled and pushed together, pulled me in the middle and began to do something to my body. And then when they're done, now I've got these huge lights and they're, they're up on, you know, really tall, maybe 48 inch tabletops, which were also they were part of the same thing. Uh, the same bedroom set, but they, they were really tall and really heavy, and these lamps were really tall and gave off a lot of bright light. Well, anyway, the one comes off of his haunches and is kneeling in a full kneeling position, and he shoots his wings out, and he goes through the walls on both sides of the room. And, and they pass as they go up. You know, it causes the lights in the room to dim, to actually the incandescent bulb. So they dimmed, and that's when I woke up and in a flash, I was blinded, and they were gone. Now this is, you're talking about a smaller, this is smaller the version? Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, much, much smaller than this. These guys were about 18 feet. Once I uh, measured and took calculations and measured the actual roof, uh, if these, Fellows would stand up, they would have been both uh, 17 to 18 feet tall. Wow. The one might have been the one that was closest to me that pushed me over, uh, and the one that pulled over was a tiny bit smaller, but maybe not less than but about 18 feet. And then the minute uh, they went up like this, it was like, well, oh, it was tremendous. And then they, uh, how do you call that, furl their wings? Right. They, lift, they lifted their wings up, and it, their wings went through both sides of the house, of, of the room. And I'm in a huge house, and, uh, and it comes up, and it stops at the top, and I go to look directly, and instantly I'm blinded, and I'm in a, a, the lights are on, and they're back to full brightness, but I can't see. And so all I can see is there's shapes in the rooms, uh, of furniture and the lights are on but I still can't see it. So for a good two or three minutes my eyes are like whited out. It's like when you pass out from certain maneuvers in an aircraft and right. white versus blackout. Well I, I just couldn't see for about a minute or two. And then when I finally opened there's everything's back to normal. Anyway, uh, that's what the fellow looked like. Had a big long beast neck there and a snout so they see his snot, and he was speaking something, and they were speaking both back and forth. Well, I later figured out what that was, because uh, when I went to look and study it, I was studying about the exact thing that these guys were doing <laughs> to me. Uh, it was weird synchronicity. But anyway, I just wanted people to see, um, you know, and we got in some deep trouble last night. These guys were coming after us, and like I say, I got... Um, Hal put off sent me an email a day ago. And he's the head guy, of the uh, chairman of the Avian Group, which, you know, Hal put off used to be his codename is Owl in the little club they have. 
Um, he used to be in charge of um, MK Ultra, and he took over MK Ultra project when Sidney Gottlieb got caught doing all kinds of stuff, killing uh, generals and admirals and stuff, murdered them uh, because they started freaking out. He put them on LSD and they started freaking out. So yeah. he out of uh, the 12th floor or something like that, 16th floor. Anyway, um, so I just deleted it because it's like, why in the world would I put on with the aviary? Uh, they're all killers. I mean, you, you, uh, you look at uh, John B. Alexander, Dr. Death, who's a uh, PhD in anatology, which is Greek for the study of killing, study of death. Hmm. Anyway, I wanted people to see this because this is tremendous. Uh, this is not a craft, and as you can see, there's a vibration resonating around where the mouth of this creature would be, and you can still see the stylus. I don't know if I can zoom in on this. Yeah, vibrating. Um, you can actually, when I bring it up, you can see the vibration of the stylus. Right. And it's only vibrating in a very violent way here, and of course, you can see now he's you can see that he's a seraphim. I mean I recognize the the shape of it right off, but you know, there's the head, there's the neck, there's the body, and they had men like that looks like men down to their ankles where they had um I don't know, bird claws, yeah. you know, that nature. That's what I saw. That's amazing. Uh, that's just, an experience of many, many years ago. And that's why I said when I saw this thing flying out, it's like, I have seen this before. <laughs> and this is not a battle wrestle. And of course, everybody at NASA just went, you know, it doesn't exist. <laughs> As usual. Yeah. Well, eight hours later, as we zoom in, you can still see this whole thing is still vibrating. Now, where did this fellow go? Right. He, uh, he's out there somewhere, and all these other guys are, you know, they're they're uh, watching. I don't see any shooting whatsoever. Ah, there's one. There's somebody taking a shot there. But whatever he did, he got their attention. And so I just wanted to share that, and uh, we can put that on YouTube. And like I say, uh, you can see that there's a slight deviation there, which means that they played with the footage and cut part of uh, eight hours earlier, part of the pictures here. And then this is completely a totally new picture that probably was... Uh, this, pro this picture probably was taken from 2009 or something like that and just grafted it in. Hmm. Uh, because, you know, this is a sign that you're... It's, but, what do they call that? Photoshopping? Yeah, yeah, messing with it. Yeah. And they'll Photoshop some of the uh, Solar Warden and the Solar Watch vessels that come too close because they, they have to go places. And you'll see the vessels out here. And if they didn't pixelate them out, uh, you would easily identify them because you see them in the sky. And they're not, they're not uh, different right here. They're, they're folks that built the stuff right here on planet Earth. Oh. Yeah. So just wanted to share that with you. That happened today on the 4th of April, 2016. At uh, 0712 Zulu time, rainy screen time. And uh, thank you, Andrew, for sharing this, yeah, that, allowing me, giving the opportunity to share this uh, with people. And then we can put it on. Uh, I, I, hope, I, try, I hope that you, you do put this on your Facebook. Yeah, I'll put it on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, and 
Okay, and then too. what we can do is you'll send me a copy. I can put it on my. Right. Uh, yeah, if you send me a copy of the video, I'll put it on my YouTube channel. Right, right. I will. I'll uh, do that. Now, uh, what you want to do? Well, I guess everybody knows you. You'll just let them know where to go look at this. No, go, it, go ahead. You can tell them exactly. Well, okay. Well, my my YouTube channel is uh, Daniel Bradley Bowen the Third. So it's really easy. Full spelling. If you see it right here, it's uh, just with uh, three eyes. Uh, Roman numeral right. right spelling with I I I. Um, and you can go there, and I'll post that there. I haven't posted in a long time because, of course, we've been working trying to get. Uh, so get this stuff can, out. <laughs> and we can do video because if you um, tap in through the classified satellites and look at the true feeds of actually what's going on unfiltered, um, there is a audio signal that you'll notice on the first, second, and third video that I've done. This audio, uh, we screened out the signal, that, but it, it will shut off your. That's the high pitch. Well, it's uh, it's like the sound that you hear. It's not only irritating; that's just irritating. There's a uh, set of tones digital that comes in and tells Windows to shut down. Right, right. Here, and the minute it goes to a certain frequency, it just your Windows just crash, and it takes a long time to get it back up. So we. Um, didn't know that, but she had filtered it out when we were doing the classified feeds, and I just put no audio, I just turned the audio completely off on the rest of it. Yeah, that's and I'm trying to show you with the stylus what's going on. And um, so from now on, if it gets hot and heavy and we get into another D Day situation, and here, if you'd like to, then what we can do is I can actually go through and um, they're aware of it now, so they're doing a lot of cutting. If we get to it first, while it's happening, um, then we can bring it to you, or we hack in the back door and take the footage from one of the satellites that gets a download feed from this that's unfiltered, right? Unredacted. Yeah, we'll be. We'll have to do that. We'll just take a couple of those. Yeah, they'll let them know when it's coming. We'll, we'll wait till um, maybe one out of 10 or one out of 20 Kodak moments happen. <laughs> and then we'll sneak you the, we'll sneak you the classified footage until somebody comes knocking at the door. Plus, um, we'll, plus we'll be doing the regular, um, some other updates and other editing of previous ones too and stuff like that. Right. So you see what's going on from all Skycam. Right. I mean right. when you're seeing because some of the stuff you're seeing is uh sun dogs. Right. And some of the stuff you're seeing is I don't know what you're saying, but it's really cool. <laughs> um we did see a uh, a blue kachina come out of the sun and go around the earth and clear out a lot of bad guys. And uh, that week that um, supposedly a meteorite fell on southern France, well, this wave was going around the earth from west to east. That's not the natural flow of things. Right. This planet is going around shooting because these guys are getting really too close to earth, and then all of a sudden Mufon goes crazy. And they have all these pictures, and I put these pictures in these fireballs. There's probably maybe three or four pictures I picked up off uh, uh, mutual UFO network of people taking pictures of what they thought was multiple string of UFOs. Well, they entered the atmosphere, and uh, that was in itself a good idea. And of course, it went YouTube and went viral. This stuff just coming, plumbing in, black smoke. <laughs> White smoke, four ends in fire, and um, these are not meteorites. Right, right. right. Uh, these are radioactive. Kind of don't go near that meteorite unless you've got some kind of protection, and uh, or just don't do it. Right. Just, I just suggest this is crash trash. Um, you'll end up like me, over radiated. I've got like five, six times more radiation. Exposure 
you know, about 500 reds per hour life maximum life time doses that you can heal from. Anything over that, uh, yeah, you, it doesn't do well for the human container. Not at all. And, and so, um, I don't know, but from time to time we'll bring you Kodak moments and show you some things that you've never seen before. Yeah. Like uh, the, the big picture. Uh, <laughs> I've got pictures that will just blow your mind. Um, uh, most of these pictures came from sort of a uh, Patty Elder song. Right. Um, because she, she built the computer systems that are in this particular satellite. And so it's hard to keep her out because she built it. She actually designed it and built it and put it in there. And all of her designs are in all of Sky Pebble, all of military, all of NASA. That's great. Yeah. Let me, um, let me get the screen share off and uh, okay. Well, get thank your... you, Andrew, so much for doing this and helping me with it because I am not very tech savvy um, when it comes to certain things, except for Meltronics and uh, uh, Vistars. I, I can tell you what's going on. I don't know if it's a lie or if it's the truth. All right. Let me close this out and I'll get back to you in a moment. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Love, love the light, everybody. Keep praying, meditating, manifesting, and you know what? We win. I think I read the last chapter of many books. We win. That's right. So thanks again. Let's go ahead and hit, take off the screen share. Okay. Um, how do I do that? Stop share. All right. Okay. Let me bring up. Your I'll leave that up for five ten seconds. I'm going to look at it and pause it and read it. And right, yeah, and otherwise, it's just like uh, boring stuff. I mean, it's boring to me. <laughs> it, it wasn't boring when I was having to deal with all these right. people. But it was, uh, it was, you know, I had a boring life when I was asleep. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay, so I'll meet you back on Skype. Okay. Or yeah. you just want to go here because this is the same. Skyping and Zooming seems to work out really well. Yeah, let me stop this so because we're already over an hour. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry this is, that. yeah. <laughs> It's Project Ascension. I'm your host, Andrew Mallet, and that was Sergeant Daniel Brad McMullen, United States Air Force. And we'll be back with number two.